What's your worst friend stabbed your backstory? Story 1. My friend was dating a girl who I could tell just didn't like me, but at least we were civil to one another, until the camping trip on the May 24th holiday weekend. She was adamant about keeping our alcohol separate. That was fine. I had my beer, they had their Mike's Hard Lemonades, fine. Then I got up early on the first morning and made pancakes for everyone. Why? Because that's just how I roll. When the campers rolled out of their tents to the smell of apple cinnamon pancakes and campfire coffee, she was the only one to flip out. I'd gone into her cooler and used her margarine. My buddy just looked pained and tried to keep the peace as I tossed her a toonie and apologized. Her reaction was to grab a lock from his gym bag and lock their tent with their booze and their food. Later, he came to me and asked if he could borrow the car so that they could run into town, get some rubber band, and have some words about being a bit easier with the other campers. I said okay and handed him the keys. When they returned hours later, the tank was empty, and the field kitchen, a wooden box W slash straps called a Wanigan W slash plates, cutlery pots, and pans, etc., was missing from the back of the station wagon. We searched the camp, nothing. It was my dad's and had been handed down in the family for generations. I drove off to fill the tank and buy a new tub of margarine and was halfway down the country road when I saw the Wanigan on the side of the road, smashed in the ditch. There were marks along the back panels beside the flattened down seats where one of them had clearly pushed it out the back of the moving car. After piling it all, stunned piece by piece back into the wagon, I gassed up and drove back, then packed up. Not a word was said by anyone until I tore up the camping permit and peeled out with their shouts behind me in the dust. Never spoke to either one of them again. Story 2 Former best friend, college and med school roommate, banged and knocked up my ex-wife while I was deployed on the USS. Nimitz, big loud aircraft carrier, for six months. Plus, the two assholes flipping wrecked and almost destroyed the 1965 Ford Thunderbird my grandfather passed down to me. I knew it was going to be a good divorce proceeding when the judge kept referring to me as Commander Kludko, sir, during the hearing. He was a former junior JAG officer. Edit. Thanks for the karma. I'm mostly a lurker. But I had a feeling a deeply messed up up point in my life as a comment would either bomb or give me massive points. As for comments and PMs, doing a total restore slash modernization on the car, no longer on the Nimitz, and the Navy is awesome, at least for me. Watch the PBS documentary called Carrier, Really Good Look at Life on an Aircraft Carrier. Story 3. I was in what I later realized was a very bad relationship, but at the time this dude was like a religion to me. I was crazy about him. My best friend at the time was sort of a mean girl. But I wasn't very good at making friends, so I put up with her being cruel to people. She would never do anything to hurt me, right? Anyway, that relationship started getting abusive, but I kept with it because, you know, I was young and stupid. I convinced myself that if I tried a little harder, everything would just fix itself. It didn't, and after a few months, we broke up. Sometime later, I was at a party, and my friend was a bit drunk. She told me, laughing the entire time, how she and this fudge were sleeping with each other two weeks after we started dating. She details about how they would have close relationship while he was talking to me on the phone and then laugh about it. She went on to detail all of the ways and places they used to sneak around to sleep with each other. And this was the girl I would cry to when my ex would abuse me. She didn't seem to have any idea that what she was saying was messed up up. She actually thought that I would think it was funny too. Story 4. I had one friend that would steal from friends pretty regularly, one time I had a small social gathering, six or seven people, and my new smartphone went missing. Scumbag helps me look for the phone in my house for over an hour. Later on, I see my phone in his room on his desk. I just took it back. No words were exchanged. I just stopped talking to him altogether after that. Later, he was at a mutual friend's party. Her 80 GB iPod goes missing. Me and some other friends were suspicious that it was him. So the next day, we called up the local pawn shop and described the iPod. Pawn shop guy said he got one that day. Sure enough, it was under Scumbag's name. Pawn shop owner offered to call the cops. We declined. We approached Scumbag and told him we knew. He tried to deny it, but we managed to shame him into admitting it. Fudge people that steal from friends. Story 5. In high school, I was in love with one of my best friends. I'll call her Jackie. Jackie and I dated a little bit then. Right before prom, I found out she was screwing my other best friend. I'll call him Sam. Turned out they were going to prom together and had planned never even coming to pick me up. I confronted him about it and he spread rumors around the school that I smacked Jackie around and emotionally abused her. I found this out when I arrived at the prom and had a mob of people drag me behind the hotel and beat me until I couldn't scream anymore. Nobody ever believed that they lied, so I joined the Navy to get away instead of going to the college I had planned on with my friend's edit. Thanks for all the support. A few people wanted to know why I didn't track him down, and the reason was that it wouldn't solve anything except get my peach arrested. Although, yes, you're right. It would feel awesome. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Story 6. 
As roommates in college, we purchased furniture and electronics for the house, the agreement being that when we graduated and moved out, that one would buy the other out. The day comes when my roommate begins packing up for his new job in another city. I say my goodbyes and head to work for the day. I return eight hours later to an empty house. Showerbag took everything he could. Edit. Holy moly, I never expected to be one of those folks that wakes up and has to make an edit thanking folks. I will answer a few questions I read. I had talked to him the day previous about what was going with who. I wrote him a check the night before. The check was waiting for me on the fridge when I got home. As for legal recourse, I had no receipts or any way to prove I had bought any portion of our shared items. I was kind of stuck in that regard. It was very much a teachable moment for me. Looking back, I probably should have seen something like this coming. I had cashed in my birthday and Christmas presents chit with my folks to get him a plane tick to NYC for New Year's. When he gave me a video game and I didn't get him anything, he tried to hold that over my head for a while. Finally, about two years after this all happened, he had contacted my folks and asked for money. What for? I have no idea. Story 7. While freelancing on a sweet gig that came out of the blue, I found out that I would be working with Sean, a guy who was in my group at a former ad agency. Awesome, a friendly face. Sean was a geek. No one liked him, and as his associate creative director, supervisor, I looked out for him. He seemed to try hard, and I didn't understand why everyone excluded him. During two rounds of layoffs, I went to bat for the guy and saved his job, promising to work with him. He was always busy, and soon after I moved on to a new job. So I looked forward to working with him some more and proving those mean bastards from our old agency wrong. While working this freelance job, L sensed something was wrong soon after it began. Sean had no ideas. None. He literally brought a blank pad in day after day. Excuses were that he was tired, the assignment confused him, etc. I was nervous, but I was stuck. So since we were on a team, I shared my ideas, our only ideas, with him. We had to present an hour after lunch. During lunch, I had to go to a doctor's appointment with my wife, who was seriously ill. On my way back to the office, the cab I was in had an accident. A banana and a Lexus slammed into us. No one was hurt, but it totaled both cars. Further, I didn't feel comfortable leaving the cabbie, as he was foreign and spoke little English. The guy who hit us was ranting, so I stayed to give a statement to the police. I called Sean to explain and asked if he minded handling the meeting and asked him to relay my situation. Then, Thorne presented my work, claimed it was all his, and they sent me home because Sean nailed it. Salt in the wound? Took nine months to get paid for the time I did put in. All along, I tried to explain, but no one believed me. He copied my notes in his own writing and submitted them as proof. As far as they were concerned, I was riding this guy's coattails. I could have kicked his nuts for a week without getting bored. Two months later, he was found out when he tried it again. Dozens of former co-workers called to rub my nose in it. Still think we're just picking on Sean. I learned that sometimes people are shunned because they deserve it. Edit. A ton of typos. Story 8. My buddy introduced me to a lady friend of his at a party. I took an interest in her, asked my buddy if he was cool with me asking her out, and he told me to go for it. She and I had what I thought was a great date. My buddy called me the next day to tell me that the lady wasn't interested and couldn't see a way to let me down gently. So she asked him to tell me to break all contact. About two months later, I was drunk dialing various folks. Decided to call the lady up and ask her why she had blown me off. She said that my buddy had told her that I wasn't interested and that I wouldn't be calling her anymore. Story 9. This is not my worst story, but it's definitely the weirdest. I lived with this crazy girl a few years back. She was a fun roommate, but her crazy got old pretty fast. She decided to move out, which was great because I was done with her drama and really wanted the place to myself. My first night in the place by myself was fantastic. It was quiet and clean, and I couldn't wait to fall asleep. I crawled into bed and pulled my comforter over me. But my comforter felt weird. It felt almost flat. Well, that didn't make any sense because I had a very expensive fluffy down comforter. I checked under my duvet cover, and that bad person switched out my comforter with her dirty, nasty Walmart comforter. Who the fudge steals someone's comforter? Edit. I forgot some words. Story 10. I had a friend for 20 years. He called me at night to ask to borrow $3,600. It was for his last year of a degree and would get him a raise when he graduated. At the time, I was making quite a bit of money and had lots in the bank. He said he would pay me back in a year. Three years later, after the crash, he still had not paid me back and was constantly giving me lame excuses like, he needs three vacations a year and is saving to buy a house. My situation had changed, and he was still not only refusing to pay me back, but still asking for favors and loans. I finally said I was broke, to which he replied, you are stupid. I am never going to pay you back or help you out. I dropped him as friend and have had very little contact with him since. He did hire my wife at a company he manages. I guess I should have saw this coming. I had just gotten married and had two kids. Another time he said, your kids aren't starving. He always just thought of himself. Could not care about anybody else. 
I guess I thought he was funny. Listen to his hooker stories and finally enough was enough. Last time I talked to him as a friend, he was asking me to get him some marijuana. I said it was way out of my way. I was too busy. He said, too much to ask for A? I said, well, what would you do for me? When you grow up with a guy, it just seems it is too hard to recognize he isn't really a friend. Kept this inside for a while. Don't have any friends from high school anymore because they were all like this. Should have hung out with a better class, really. Story 11. I had a friend that was desperate for a place to stay, so I let him. He ended up coming into my room in the middle of the night and sexually assaulting me in my own bed. Threw the trust, the friendship, and my peace of mind right out of the window. Edit. Thank you, everyone, for all of your wonderful comments. You've made my night, and you've allowed me to have a rather intelligent conversation about an important issue. I've never really talked about the assault to this extent, but it's rather relieving and liberating. You are all awesome. Edit 2. I'm heading to bed now. It's 4.41 a.m. here in Canada. But thank you everyone for your wonderful comments, encouragement, and conversation. It really made me feel great. Story 12. Lots of friends would tell my ex where I was and how to get to me when he was stalking me. He was 20. I was 16. Edit 1. For those who wanted an example, there are several, but this is the biggest one. I was at an after-prom party at a friend's house when he walks in the door about 2 a.m. He proceeded to get aggressive and threatened a lot of my friends that knew he was bad news. They finally physically pushed him out. Two girls apparently had called him and given him the gate code to come pick them up. After it all went down, they were sobbing and I was comforting them. Pretty messed up up. Next day, the hostess tells me she'd told those girls five times why they couldn't have him over at the party in detail. Also, a friend showed me his Facebook. His post went like this. Him. Feeling like causing some trouble tonight. Girl one. Not yet, yo. We've got plans. Him. K text me the details. It's also relevant to mention that that girl had once convinced me to not break up with him and lied for him a lot. Story 13. My best friend of 12 years, we were living together. I trusted him with my life. I mean, we grew up together. We even went to collage together. Turned out he was flipping my girlfriend of three years for six months before it dawned on me. I knew she was unhappy with the relationship. I confided in him during those six months, and he would play dumb to it and try and console me. How do you do that so well to a bro? I mean, thinking back on it, it should have been obvious to me. All the signs were there, but you just don't suspect your best friend. In the end, she stole 1,000 pounds from me and he stole my PS2, all my games, and moved in with her. The day I came banging on her door, she answered the door with him, moving boxes everywhere, and he had this fudge you stare on him, and I was just in shock. I didn't know they had stolen from me at the time, so I just stood there in total shock. I turned around and walked away. I didn't even look at her. I knew things were going south with her for a long time, but he royally messed up me, and I couldn't believe it. Six months later, I got together with another girl, spent an incredible year with her, and forgot about everything that happened. Love of my life. But it went south with her, too, and unfortunately, she passed away of a seizure, and only now, five years since, have I gotten over that. Not much luck with women, I guess. I imagine most stories will be similar to mine, but man, just can't believe your best bro could do that. It so crippled me for the longest time. Story 14. Was sexually assaulted at a party by the boyfriend of one of my best friends. I tearfully tell her what happened. She tells me that she's jealous that her boyfriend was so close relationship with me and not her. She's jealous that her boyfriend found me so attractive. Jealous that he would choose to assault me. She wishes that he would do that with her. She wishes she were so attractive to men. Her and all my friends never talked to me again. Spiraled into a deep depression, which included not leaving my room for two years. While I have somewhat healed and dealt with the fallout, I still don't have any friends. Story 15. My roommate and supposedly my best female friend slept with my ex fiance in our bed every day for three months while living with us because her mom kicked her out. When I found out it wasn't one of my more ladylike moments, just a word of advice, if I may. Though it is natural to go after the mistress, don't let the SO get out of it, especially if he's still defending her even after she moves out. Also, once a cheater, always a cheater, is most certainly a very true cliche. Lastly, not many two straight adults of opposite sixes will watch censored photos together just because they can. Usually they're flipping. If you catch your SO doing so with anyone who isn't you, don't brush it off. Edit. When I mentioned that straight people of opposite genders don't usually watch censored photos together without getting physical, I should have said that they don't do it in secret when the one's fiancé leaves for work and when the other guilty party is supposedly your best friend. If you find a secret conversation that they're watching censored photos while you're away, they're probably flipping. Just my experience on the matter. Story 16. I let my best friend stay with me while I was house-sitting for my grandmother one summer so she could save up money and get a real apartment. The first weekend she arrived, I had a short camping trip planned, so I left her there alone for two days. 
When I returned, I found out that she and another friend of mine invited two shady guys over. One was a candy dealer, and the other brought a camera to film. They proceeded to trash the house and then messed up them in my grandmother's bed, leaving a condom on the floor for me to clean. One of the guys stole my $400 iPod. They both refused to pay me back. They blamed each other's dudes and took no responsibility. Worst thing is my grandmother suffers from dementia and constantly talks about stuff missing, and my mother always says it was probably that incident. I dealt with lots of family shame and terrible feelings of betrayal. Fudge them. Story 17. When I was a freshman in high school, I dated a guy who was really emotionally abusive. At the time, of course, I couldn't see it. And one night it crossed the line into physical when he sexually assaulted me. I was terrified and didn't tell anyone except my then best friend, who urged me to break things off. When I did break up with him a little while down the road, I went to stay with my biological dad out of state to get myself back together. While I was there, my then best friend sent me an email telling me that she and my ex-boyfriend had gotten together. I was incredibly upset, felt lied to, and just disgusting. The next few months consisted of the rest of our mutual friends constantly hounding me about how I was being awful and unfair, and how she was so upset over what I was doing to her. I never really spoke to her again. It's been at least six years now. They're still together, and I still think it's messed up up. Story 18. Throw away extremely long story short, I had a record deal with a very major record label. One of my best friends was my manager. I ignored one phone call from him when I was taking a day off and wanted to be out of contact, which he knew, and he decided that was the signal to call the label as the project was coming to a close and lie to them about how he had produced most of the record. He hadn't, and proceeded to help leak some of the instrumentals to another producer at the label, who stole them and released them with other artists. Months of working night and day on a project fully by myself, from instrumental to vocals to mixing went down the drain, and the final product ended up in so much legal red tape that I couldn't even release my own 100% self-created album for free, much less independently or on another label. My career rebounded, albeit mainly on the local internet and underground circuits. Whether that label could have taken me to be in the spotlight or not, I will never know. I haven't spoken to that friend in years. Every so often, he runs into my mother and he tries to stage these accidental meetings with me. I couldn't be more cold each time we interact, and he still tries to act as if he doesn't know why. He thinks one day everything will just go back to normal if he waits long enough. No, you live in a huge house and made a ton of money off exploiting my work. I am doing okay from busting my peach off. We will not be back to normal until you can promise me that album with that label backing it at that specific time in history wouldn't have made me a cow ton of money because just parts of it sold to artists obviously made you some. Story 19. My best friend back at school, a kid called Ramsey, etched a whole bunch of swear words on my school desk with a red pen in huge capital letters. These were those old school desks that had plenty of graffiti on them already, but we're talking about two-inch high letters here, engraved into the desk with a red biro, spelling out fudge, cow, unpleasant, pour out the water, fart, etc. We were about ten at the time. The next day, the headmaster came into our classroom, saw the desk, and flipped his cow. I said it wasn't me, and he seemed fairly inclined to believe me. I mean, who writes that kind of thing on their own desk? But he had other stuff to attend to that day, so he left it in the hands of my form teacher to decide whether or not I was guilty and to dispense punishment accordingly. Unhappily for me, my form teacher was an absolute of a human being named Mr. Fox, who not only despised me, for various reasons, none of which were particularly justifiable, but at the time, was also trying to bang in the process of banging Ramsey's mother. They later married and had three kids. He was one of those two-faced sorts who acted like everybody's favorite teacher in front of anybody he deemed important enough. But when alone with his students, he was primarily an impatient, ignorant bully and a terrible teacher to boot. Put me off geography for life. Anyway, to put it bluntly, I was messed up from the start. Therefore, the whole first class of that day was basically one long extended verbal whooping from my form teacher. His shouts echoed around the whole building, letting pretty much everybody in a pretty small school know what was going on. At first, I protested my innocence and was waiting for Ramsey to step forward and admit that he'd done it, which of course he never did. I was stealing glances at him the whole time, and he was just sitting there watching the show unfold. Everything I did made me look more guilty in the eyes of Fox. I started to cry because I was a 10-year-old kid being asterisk screamed at asterisk and having a great hulking index finger poked into my chest for something I hadn't done. He took this as crying out of guilt, and because I'd been caught out doing something wrong. Professing my innocence but having nobody else to blame, I didn't want to blame Ramsey because I was no tattletale, 
And as I still thought he was my best friend and was hoping he'd come forward at some point just to halt the carnage, he took this as obvious proof of guilt. In the end, just to stop getting shouted at, I came clean and said it was Ramsey who did it. This actually made things worse. What followed was pure, unadulterated nonsense of the highest order. Fox asks Ramsey if he did it, in the kindest, sweetest manner, of course. Don't want him going home and telling his mum that the guy who was trying to dip his banana in her was shouting at her son. Ramsey says no, in the world's best, oh good gracious, I can't believe I could ever be accused of such villainous behavior, voice. Fox insists that golden boy Ramsey doesn't even asterisk no asterisk these words. Yeah, right. Still refusing to take the blame, and in hindsight, making things much worse for myself, Fox then apologetically asks Ramsey to write out each of the words on paper so he could compare the handwriting. He notes that Ramsey's capital R in fart has a loop that isn't evident on the desk scrolls, so it couldn't possibly be him. Ten-year-old me neglects to remind him that the desk graffiti was into the wood with a biro by scratching it in over and over. It would have been impossible to do that loop anyway. Fox eventually opens and searches my entire desk in front of the whole class. He rifles through all my textbooks and notepads, trying to find evidence of my criminal intentions. He's tossing books and pencil cases on the floor, really making a show of this. I'm in real tears by this point. This whole thing has been going on for about 20, 30 minutes now. He gets almost to the bottom of my desk, increasingly frustrated at finding nothing incriminating, until he finds an old notebook and starts flicking through. His eureka moment arrives, the final nail in the coffin that proves decisively that I'm a felonious delinquent. I'd started writing some homework assignment, but had made several mistakes in the first couple of lines, and had decided just to start again on a fresh sheet of paper. I'd scribbled out everything I'd written, and for some reason had written, oh cow below, probably just to entertain myself. This damning evidence sealed my fate. After more shouting, I was punished pretty severely, was given detentions for pretty much the rest of the year, had to sandpaper off all the words from my desk, which was actually kind of fun. I missed a couple of school trips, one of which had been mainly earned by me. I got neither recognition nor was allowed to go, though that's another story, and had to endure taunts and nonsense comments for the next few years from teachers and students alike whenever the subject of graffiti came up. I didn't speak to Ramsey again for a long time, not even to tell him what a banana he was. Kind of regret that. I should have let him know what a banana he'd been for not coming clean. The funny thing is that given the situation between Fox and Ramsey's mother at the time, Ramsey probably would have gotten off scot-free. Either way, between his inability to look me in the eye after that and my unwillingness to speak to him at all, we didn't really talk again for a long time. Two or three years later, Ramsey came in one morning and said to me, Hey, remember that time I wrote those swear words on your desk? I'm sorry about that. That was it. Not a real apology, really. He apologized for the act of writing the words, not for denying it and letting me take the fall. He also never admitted to Fox, who at this point was banging Ramsey's mother with such regularity that she was already spewing forth his foul, black-hearted demon spawn from her corrupted womb, that it was him. In fact, he once again pointedly denied it later, when Fox taunted me about it after Ramsey had apologized to me. Yes, he was still using it as ammunition to disparage me too, three years later. And I'd made the error of thinking that his apology to me meant he had come clean to everybody. Nope, still denied. Fox was disgusted that I was still trying to blame Ramsey for it so long after the incident. Still, all of this taught me a few important lessons. Don't believe for a minute that somebody you trust won't betray you to keep their nose clean. Always try to remain cool-headed when accused of wrongdoing, especially if you're innocent. Perhaps most importantly, don't believe that there is such a thing as inherent justice in any system, especially when the appointed judge dispensing it is an unpleasant who bullies kids to make himself feel like a big man. Sorry for wall of text. Story 20. Apparently my best friend in middle school humiliated me to get in with the popular kids. I was super weird back then and kids are mean. It sort of backfired on her because despite the fact that they let her hang around them, they also picked on her, took advantage of her, etc. I remember being upset at the way they treated her. I also had no idea. I had a small group of friends in middle school and was fairly happy. I found out years later in college. I went to a different high school than most people, so I got a fresh start there with other weird people like me. Freshman year of college, I meet up with someone who I knew from middle school, and he told me what she'd done. I was pretty surprised to hear it. Story 21. This is likely to get buried, but I have to get it off my chest. My husband and I went to go see a concert, and the ex-friend offered to happily babysit our two-year-old at the time. The concert was running late, as concerts tend to. After the show, I checked my phone, and she had left numerous texts saying she was going to leave my house and leave our son alone if we didn't get home. I went full mom hulk, rushed home, and told her to get the fudge out of my house. She was the kind of person that called herself auntie and constantly undermined mine and my husband's parenting. Phew, I feel better. 
edit. Apparently, this comment made its way into an article that George Takai shared. Just in case anyone wants to come hunting through my comment history. And to clarify, I checked my phone after the show was supposed to be over, not after the whole show. The two-year-old is now eight years old. Story 22. In grade 11, I met my first girlfriend. We were really great together. Even though I had to drive 45 minutes to meet her, I always looked forward to hanging out with her because she was awesome. About four months into the relationship, however, my best friend started talking to my girlfriend. I didn't see anything wrong with it because I trusted him and her. Big mistake. One night, my girlfriend sends me an IM. How could you do this to me? My heart sank immediately. I had no idea what she was talking about. I kept asking what I did, but she kept saying I was just playing dumb. I called her on the phone to talk to her. She said that my best friend had told her that I had been flirting with another girl at my school. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't convince her otherwise. She broke up with me. About a month later, I go into the town where she lived. Me and another friend are going to hang out with some mutual friends of my ex. We go to their house and who is there but my best friend and my ex, her sitting on my best friend's lap. Apparently, my best friend had asked her out a bit after she broke up with me and she had said yes. She trusted him because he had outed me. To this day, this is the biggest betrayal I have ever felt. Story 23. Throw away. I don't want my house burnt down car keyed. I had to go out of town for work. Six weeks. Not far enough that I couldn't come back every weekend. GF at the time was a closet psycho. It hadn't shown yet, but she was on a downward spiral. Two solid days together with five days apart wasn't good enough for her. Best friend had a lot of girlfriends. Go to him for advice, to vent, you know, to keep it together, to have a buddy to talk to. He asks if he can talk to her about anything. I say no, just give me advice. Fast forward to week five. Girlfriend meltdown. Calls me saying she hates me. Citing complaints I had about her to my best friend, but way amplified over what I had said. I tell her how much I love her. There's no way it can be my best friend. We've been buddies for over a decade. We share stories all the time. Somebody is flipping with me. I confront him. I have not said a thing to her, he says. He blames it on his crazy ex. My GF at the time confirms it's his crazy ex. She hacked his email, sent all of the logs of my complaints out of context to my GF because she was worried about our relationship. Okay, I can recover this. I'm a good person. It's obviously out of context. I try to explain so much to her. Friend upset about crazy ex. She's flipping with my relationship too, man, he says. He's with a different girl right now. They've been together for over a year. They're having trouble, but he can pull through, I think. I love her more than anything ever, he says. I want to marry her, he says. I'm tired of dating. This girl is the one, he says. I still go to my friend for advice. He tells me to relax. It will get better when I get back. Concentrate on my work. I was naive, not working. She says she can't handle me being away all the time. Five days at a time, I drive five hours home every weekend and five hours back to work. She says she's seeing somebody else to stay happy. Okay, hang out with somebody else. You're still mine. I ask my best friend, no way, man, she isn't. She can't give you a name, therefore she isn't. She's just messing with you. Stay strong. Fast forward. I get back. I deal with her completely psycho bad person attitude for a couple weeks. She starts to like me again. I'm trying to do the right thing. I feel bad for leaving her, even though it wasn't that long. There was no hack. There was no explanation. My best friend lied to my face. He was the guy I'm with seeing and doing loads of cola. My best friend lied to my girlfriend and I to get her upset and to dislike me so he could party with her while telling me he wanted to marry his current girlfriend while blaming all of my issues on one of his exes. His lies went on for weeks. I'm upset, but he's still my best friend. I found out. I'm sorry, man. I'm trying to keep distance from your GF now. Feelings got in the way two weeks ago. Nothing happened, though. BTW, she cheated on you right before your birthday. This is where I should have cut it off. But I was naive. Me. No, I'm trying to do the right thing. I love this girl. I feel bad for how screwed she is, etc. She's a dropout, no job, hurting, but could definitely climb out if she tried. Him. How do you do it, man? How do you stay strong? He asks this a lot. I always explain I want to do the right thing and that I love this girl. I was stupid. I was addicted to the girl. I try to spend as much time with her as possible. Best friend still talks about how he wants to marry his GF. How he told her everything that happened between him and my GF. He wants both of our lives to go back to normal, he says. Fast forward a few weeks. Still rough. She's still treating me poor, but it's getting better. And better. I'm honest with everything now. She says she is being honest. She breaks. She loves me again. She tells me that seeing him meant flipping him. She was flipping my best friend while I was away. He was lying to my face saying he wanted to marry his girlfriend. He was cheating on his girlfriend with my girlfriend, and both were lying to me about it. I leave town for two weeks, distant, broken. She gets upset. We fight! She's been flipping him the whole time, even when I was back, the whole time. 
He was my best friend. He said he wanted to help me, always offered help. He used everything I ever told him in confidence while asking for relationship advice to turn her against me for months. All of the advice he gave me was designed to get her to dislike me more. Make a dinner for her man. I'll give you a recipe for an awesome meat sauce. Do it with a red wine. She hates meat sauce and red wine. He was flipping her and loading her up with free sweets after I had spent a year with her while lying to my face, looking into my eyes and telling me how bad he felt and telling me how to fix it. They both lied to me. Now they are both addicted to candy. X is massively in debt, lives at home with parents, and both work dead-end retail jobs. I got a $4,000 bonus check after my six weeks out of town. I'm still angry about it. My heart is pounding right now. I've lost a lot of faith in humanity and my once unconditional trust that people wanted to be good together. Don't date a girl that's so insecure that she needs the attention of other guys at parties to be happy, but freaks out when you so much as glance at another girl, even if she's an old lady taking your order at a restaurant. Story 24. I was interested in a guy in college, so a girlfriend and I went to his house to hang out. She knew at the time that we had a thing going on, but it wasn't serious because he didn't want it to be yet. I really liked him. Anyways, they step outside to breathe, and they are laughing and chatting. Then all of a sudden, they get quiet. They come back in, and we hang out for a little while longer, then I decide it's time to leave. We are heading out through his main hallway of his house, and they are both trying to get behind me, and it's obvious. So I let them, and I open the door to go out. I turn around as they think I've gone out the door and see them making out in the dark of the hallway. She break apart and realize I've seen them. We go out to my car and head home. I was her ride. She tries to apologize that she didn't expect that to happen, as this was their first time meeting. I basically tell her to shut the fudge up for the next 30 minutes and that I don't want to hear her speak for the duration of the drive. I drop her off and call him. He says that we aren't dating yet, so he didn't see the big deal. I actually understood because, yes, that is true. It also terminated my lady boner for him. Saved me a poor relationship. But I also found out later that this wasn't the first time she went after my table scraps. So to speak, story 25. Fly up to see one of my best girlfriends in D.C. I'm a guy to see her. We'd known each other for years, and she'd recently gotten out of a relationship. We had a thing, you could say, and I wanted to surprise her at work for a fun weekend. I let my best friend know a few days before I head out, and he wished me luck. I get to her work and ask if she had made it in yet and her friend said she'd taken the week off already and left with a guy. Cow. Check my Facebook and see my The Girl Has Checked In at an Airport. Heading on a surprise vacation. Thanks, Phil. Phil was the best friend. I've never been so sad in my life. I didn't have the fight in me to be angry at him. She had no idea, but it's still too painful to talk to her today. Story 26. A friend on my high school tennis team, Emily, was a senior and I was a junior. I had her back for years in all this drama she got into and was an all-around great friend. I got asked to the senior prom by a friend of hers, so we decided to go in the same limo. Emily told me that junior girls had to wear short dresses to prom, and seniors wore long dresses. That is not a rule. Since it was a formal dance, I just bought a nice long dress. It was beautiful. When I showed her a picture of it, she flipped out and told me I was disrespecting her. And unless I returned the dress, we weren't friends anymore. I didn't return the dress by principle. She kicked me out of the prom group and didn't speak to me for the rest of the year. Story 27 in middle school, my mom and the father of one of my classmates started dating. I kept to myself a lot, didn't have any friends, was bullied, but I was happy to finally start hanging out with this girl because she was my first real friend. Things went well. We played video games and talked about cartoons, kid stuff. Turns out she was asterisk, really asterisk friends with my bullies and didn't give two about me. She copied the contents of my diary after one sleepover and told my bullies everything. For the last four months of the school year, I had to deal with their torment while my friend pretended nothing was wrong. Thankfully, that summer, my mom and her dad split, and I was sent to a different school. Became very difficult to trust people for a while. Story 28. My best friend stole my credit cards and ran up $1,000 in vet bills for her dogs. She terminated one of my pet rats and blamed it on ghosts. She called up my ex and told her that I had cheated on her with someone who had AIDS and my ex ought to get tested. I did not cheat on my ex and certainly not with someone who had AIDS. She stole two of my very expensive and rare snakes that I bred and traded them to someone for a few geckos. I can't afford to buy them back from the person she sold them to. She told everyone she kicked me out because I stole stuff from her. She had two duffel bags of belongings total, half of which I later found out were stolen goods. Despite her crazy turns, I still gave her a couch, dishes, and various electronics when I parted ways so that she wasn't left sitting in an empty apartment with no internet. She also racked up $300 on my cell phone plan and convinced me to drive her to New Mexico to pick up her dog. I ended up homeless for Christmas over all of this, while she sat at my place with half my stuff while she told everyone how I needed to have my peach beaten for stealing her stuff. 
Everyone took her side. Yeah, worst best friend ever. She was normal and cool at first, then went crazy. Friends suck. I have my cat. Edit. Since everyone is wondering why I stuck around, let me give a timeline. Week 1. Move in with her because I'm separating from my spouse. I am a mess. Crying constantly. Barely making it out of bed to get to work. I'm drinking too much. But at least I have my best friend helping me out. Week 2. Since I have a new cell phone plan, might as well save some money and add my friend, who I'm living with anyhow. Big mistake. I'm normally not this dumb. But I'm broken. I trust her. Week two and a half. Her dog is stranded 1,200 miles away. I have a couple days off. I drive her out there. She promises to pay me back for gas hotels. I joke that I know where she lives if she doesn't pay me back. She will never pay me back. Week three. Monday. Credit cards and keys are missing. She helps me look for them and file a police report. Tuesday. Hmm, one of my rats is dead. She starts talking about ghosts. I am worried about her. She is acting off. Wednesday. She goes bat crazy on me at work. We work together. It is so bad that a supervisor pulls me aside. I tell my friend to never talk to me that way again. Thursday. She goes off on me again. At work? Again. It dawns on me that she is lying and I don't know the extent of her lies. I bad person out. I call my cousin. I leave work. I pack up. I go to my cousin's house. It takes me until the weekend, Saturday, to get all my stuff out. I have to call the landlord because she has locked me out. It dawns on me where my keys and credit cards went. She has packed up all my stuff and neatly labeled it. She is bawling and telling me not to leave and that she wants to live with me. I leave her a couch, some dishes, a modem and router. I take everything else. Turns out she had stolen what she wanted and locked it in her room. So I didn't sit around and let her do stuff to me. I was a little slow on the uptake for sure, but come on. She was my best friend. I trusted her. Turns out she is a psycho. Story 29. I'm Canadian and flew all the way to the U.S. to visit who was at the time my best friend. I am really nocturnal, so we were up late hanging out having a couple cocktails and decided to go for a late night walk since it was so nice out. It was about 1 a.m. We took our cups with us not thinking. The streets were dead, so we weren't too worried. Well, sure enough, I hear a vehicle coming, so I threw my cup as far as possible and I told him to do the same, but he held on to his. The car turned out to be a cop, and he stops and asks us if we have been stealing flowers because they had some reports someone was doing so. We said no, we were just going for a quick walk. He ends up coming to our side, spots the cup, and asks whose it is. We both denied it. The cop asked for our ID, and I had left all of my things back at his place, so he called for some backup. Six cops later, they're still trying to figure out who I am. I kept telling them I'm Canadian, and all of my IDs are at my friend's. My friend ended up telling them his drink was mine. They never did see that cup I threw. So I got patted down and groped by a couple male police officers, had to take a breathalyzer. I wasn't drunk and got put in the back of a cop car. I was crying hysterically because I had no criminal record, was afraid of being deported, and because my friends screwed me over. They drove me to my friends where I showed them my birth certificate, photo ID, passport, social insurance card, and health card. But apparently that still wasn't enough. They really wanted me arrested and my friend refused to stick up for me. They ended up leaving and said, we know that drink was yours. You should have just admitted it. I ended up phoning my parents crying, telling them everything, and have never gone back to Wisconsin. My friend just said, well, I didn't want to get in trouble. Story 30. I was in a long-term relationship with a recently realized intellectually ill woman, and my closest friend at the time would occasionally get coffee with her. I thought nothing of it. In fact, I thought it was cool that my girlfriend and best bud were hanging out. Seemingly out of nowhere, she tells me that she's in love with someone else. I am obviously hurt and instantly go to my friend for support. He tells me that it is him whom she's in love with. My mind is completely boggled, and he even tells me that he's not sure what's going on. After receiving a call from her a couple days later, saying she's having racing thoughts, I realize that she's in the midst of a manic episode, and that explains her irrationally loving my friend, whom she barely knew. My friend agrees to not talk to her, and my girlfriend tells me she's scared and isn't thinking clearly. A couple weeks later, I find out he's talking to her and has told her that he loves her, too. I felt completely betrayed and abandoned by the two closest people to me at the time. Story 31. I had a best friend. We stuck together through everything. I was going through a rough patch and pushed people away and started doing sweets, depression, and whatnot. About a year later, I tried to reconnect with him. I was going to help him move and I stayed the night at his house. He offered a drink. It was awfully fizzy. Soon after, we went to bed and that was weird too. Then the assault. Then the blocking out of the event. Then the developing issues thereafter. Then a year later, the realization of what happened. Then some mental breakdowns. I was alone. I had been abandoned by everyone I loved and assaulted by my best friend. And I went through it alone. This was years ago. I'm just starting to get the help for PTSD and therapy I've so obviously needed for a while now. I ain't even mad. He's got to live with it. 
I'm doing all right. Story 32. Not really a stabbing. My friend Patrick. Patrick didn't have a job over the summer, so I would buy the beer and some food, and I'm more than happy to share. Patrick gets a job, but Patrick still continues mooching. Patrick lives with parents and doesn't need to pay for rent or food. So I start telling Patrick things like, I just brought enough for myself. This pisses Patrick off, and he tells me to go home. At 4 a.m., the day of Hurricane Sandy, by bike, Patrick calms down and I stay the night and get a ride in the morning. Hurricane Sandy hits, and Patrick has no power or hot water. In this week, I offer and give hot showers, food, when my power comes back on a warm place to sleep. It's not my house, and his dog comes along, and we have four cats. That's all fine. Emergency is emergency, and you help people. I also help Patrick to vote. And when he gets power back, I smelled a gas leak and had to call PSEG for him and deal with all of that. And yes, there was a gas leak. No, it was not his mom's smelly vitamins. Admittedly, I was not the most happy with him and didn't spend all of my time with him for the few days he was over because I have other things to do. A week later, he texts me that I've been harsh to him lately and we should stop hanging out. So we stopped hanging out. Two months pass and my friend Lauren is having a Christmas Eve party and we decide to invite Patrick. At one point, I'm sitting on the couch and Lauren gets up from the armchair across from me and goes to her room, but leaves her phone on the arm. At which point, Patrick sits down and starts reading Lauren's texts. So I pretend to not notice and be staring at the Christmas tree. Lauren comes back and asks if anyone has seen her phone as she turns towards the kitchen. At which point I notice Patrick pulling her phone back out to put on the arm. At which point I announce, Patrick has it? He has been reading your texts. Patrick later threw up on Lauren's carpeted stairs, didn't clean it up, and didn't tell anyone. And then yelled at Lauren for not comforting him while he was sickly. Story 33. So in about fourth grade, I got a bracelet from my dad. Boy, I cherish that thing. It was gold handed down from my grandma, and reminded me of my dad who I rarely saw. Anyway, I'm sitting in class, and my friend asks if she can wear it during recess. I said no, but she kept insisting, and she was a cool kid, so I caved. I see her outside playing soccer during recess, and as she heads back in, I ask to have it back. She looks down, goes, oh, sorry, must have lost it on the field, and runs off. Well, I being naive believed her, and for as long as I could, I searched that field. Like weeks after I was still raking through the grass, never found it. Years later, I recall this whole thing and realize that bad person probably stole it. And that's the tale of the bad person who worker worker.